So good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Vishnu Dutt. And today we are into our class number four, class number four of wireless networking from scratch. You all know that we have been talking about this invisible energy, right? We discussed what exactly wavelength, frequency, amplitude, and phase is. Then we discussed about when it travels, when this invisible energy travels, what exactly happens. Some things absorb it, some <laughs> things reflect it, diffract it, and so on. In today's class, we are going to measure it. Means how we can give some numbers to this energy. And if we want to give some number to the energy, then we definitely want to learn some of the nitty gritties of mathematics. But believe me, it is going to be very, very easy. So first thing first, we will be talking about mathematics, a little bit in terms of logarithms, right? And once we are done with that, we will be talking about some units and powers, right? So if you have uh, a problem or if you have some, understand, uh, some, some understanding issues with respect to this DBI, DBM, even what exactly this decibel is, you this class is for you, right? Once we do everything with the help of mathematics, then we will be thinking that can we do some things without using logarithms because there are people means even i am from uh, i am one of them who do not like much uh, uh, this term logarithm so can we do our calculations without any logarithms right we will be talking about it and in the last class many people ask about the ir and eirp gain uh, people were not convinced about what i explained and that was my mistake so we will be taking that topic once again if time permit, which it is not going to be, as, as I have an experience from the Hindi class, we will be talking about noise floor, signal to noise ratio, and RSSI also. Right? So if you give me your next one hour and 10 minutes, believe me, these concepts are going to be with you. So although uh, you will be thinking that these, uh, these concepts are really, really uh, the fundamentals or the really basics, right? But believe me, if you have all these things in your pocket, when you go for the site surveys, when you see any antenna, when you see an access point, when you want to design wireless network, you are going to be more confident. And I'm absolutely sure about it. Having said that, I just need your one hour and 10 minutes of concentration. Okay, having said that, let's, let's talk about where are we with respect to this complete course. So as you all know that we have divided this complete course into four pieces when we broken down wireless networking. Number one was medium. Number two was the standards and protocol. Number three was wireless security. Four was Cisco's wireless architecture. Once we are done with all the four pieces, we are going to combine them. And you will be amazed to see that you have pretty good understanding of wireless networking. But still, we are in, we are just uh, uh, getting uh, or basically uh, making us uh, more concentrate on this uh, medium. We still are studying medium, right? Uh, and medium is one of the most important part for this wireless networking. We have to spend some time on this, guys, right? So if we see the complete picture, we are just in the first piece. We haven't completed the first piece. Having said that, let's talk about uh, some of the mathematics so this is where we uh, we left last class right and uh, there were some unsolicited advice with respect to money i was giving to you but believe me if you think in that terms also it is going to be great but today the whole soul focus is on understanding the big numbers and do we really need to deal with the big numbers or not so here you can see the picture and we have our favorite character, Mr. Rahul here, and he wants to grow his money. So because he's a network engineer, he's saying that every year I will be growing my money by a factor of two. The meaning is, see, this is my current year or the zeroth year. I am only having rupees one. In the first year, it is going to be rupees two. In the third year, it is going, second year, it is going to be four. And you can do the calculation like this, right? And if we reach on the 12th year, you know that we will be reaching to 4096. And what is happening right here? It is really simple calculation, guys, right? So if I talk about that, how many money, how much money you are going to get in eighth year? So you are going to say the 
I have calculated a formula for it, Mr. Vishnu. Whatever you are asking that which or uh, now basically uh, what amount of money I will be having in the eighth year, it is very, very simple. What I'm going to do because I know my money is going to be double every year. So I will be doing a calculation and I will be writing number of years here, right? So in the eighth year, I will be having two to the power eight is equal to two, uh, 64, as simple as that, right? Similarly, you can say that in the 16th year, believe me, my one rupees is going to convert into 65,536. This is the power of compounding. But here is the question, Mr. Vishnu, you must be thinking, right? Why we are learning this thing? So here is the thing. We all know 2 to the power 6 is equal to 64, right? And this give me the indication that how much of amount or how much money I so sorry I have written two to the power eight is equal to sixty four extremely sorry it is going to be one twenty eight so two to the power six is equal to sixty four this proves that in the sixth year I will be having sixty four rupees right but if I change the wording of this question so it is very very simple to calculate how much money I am going to have in the sixth year right but if I change the question right if I say Tell me in which year, right, you will be having money 2048. Really, really interesting. Now, what you need to do is you need to write this number into 2 to the power. The question actually I am asking is if you have a number 2, right, how much power you are going to write in place of this x so that this number will become 2048? Right now, I am asking this question. I am not saying after six years how much money you are going to have. I am just asking in which year you will be having 2048 rupees. Right now, the question or your answer will be whatever the value of this x is, that is the number of year in which I will be having 2048 rupees. And you can easily calculate that this number is going to be two to the means two to the power eleven. It means that you will be saying eleven years, Mr. Vishnu, as simple as that, right? And believe me, this thing two to the power x is equal to two thousand and forty-eight can be written in mathematics, right? In a different manner, right? So what I want to do, I want to calculate. 2048 rupees in which year I am going to have. I know I am growing my money with two or twice every year. Right? So I can write, I want to calculate the log of 2048 and my base is two. The meaning is, whatever the base of the log is, just you write here. Right? And you have to think. I want to get 2048 number. How much power I need to have? 2 to the power x is equal to 2000. What should be the value of x? So if I am saying log 2, 2 is base, 2048, the meaning is absolutely simple. I am just saying in which year you will be having money 2048. If you have, if you are doubling your money, if the log base is 10. So this equation and this equation is absolutely same, right? Here you are calculating in X year how many, how much amount of money you have. Here you are getting, you are calculating how much or in which year you will be having 2048 rupees if you are doubling your money, as simple as that. So I have taken the example of this base two, but generally in our daily life, we use this base as 10. Why? Because sometimes we will be saying 2 to 10 to the power 3, 10 to the power 5, 10 to the power 7. We all know all these numbers, right? I can say 10 to the power 4 is equal to 10,000. You all know about it, right? Now I am saying I want to calculate the log of 10,000 and my base is 10. What is the meaning? The meaning is I want to calculate the power of 10 which will result into 10,000, as simple as that. And you can say x value is going to be 4. Similarly, if I write 0 0.001, now it is slightly challenging problem, right? 
but i think you all understand this that if i write 0.1 the meaning is 1 by 10 or i can write it 10 to the power minus 1 as simple as that if i write 0.01 it is 1 to the 1 upon 100 it means that 10 to the power minus 2 if i write 0.001 it is exactly 10 to the power minus 3 right if that is the case i can write log 10 10 to the power minus 3 and i can see that this number and this number is same for example if i want to calculate the log of log of 2048 what can i write i can write log 2 2 to the power 11 and then the answer is going to be 11 and now here the answer is going to be minus 3 as simple as that but now the question arises mr vishnu why on earth right you are teaching us wireless and now you are teaching us these big numbers believe me i do not want to work on the these big numbers that is why i am using log i do not want to deal with 10000 or maybe 10 to the power 9 10 to the power 10 or 0 0.000001 because this is what you are going to get this rf signal power once you receive it it is going to be very very less sometime and it is going to be very very high if you compare with the less right I do not want to deal in these big numbers, but try to think, right? If I write 10 to the power 9, it is 1 billion. And if I calculate the log of it to the base 10, it will be 9. There is something which can be written, right? As a very small number, which is representing a very big, big number. Sometimes we want this. We do not want to deal in huge numbers. Suppose somebody is saying, what is the power of this RF signal? And you are saying 0.000000975. No, this is not making sense. Just give me some number, easy number to understand, right? And that is where I am going to use this logarithm. It is really, really easy concept, guys, right? But if you are having some uh, problem in understanding it, Please let me know and we can discuss about it. But having said that, let's talk about few more things. Uh, one more board where I have explained it. And this is the problem which I am facing uh, in today's whiteboard that some pictures are gone. Okay, so just wait a minute. Now, as you can see here, I am taking another example to get into the details of logarithmics that why I am talking about big numbers and how I am going to convert them into a small number. So I have this blue line here, right? And on this blue line, I am just writing the number. Here I have a number, means one, and after one we have six zeros. Then we have 10,000, we have 1,000, sorry, we have 100, 1, 0 0.01. 0 0.001 and then point uh, 0000001 and you can understand that how much difficulty i am having right in just telling you about these numbers so what i'm doing is i am taking the log of every number whatever i am showcasing you and i am calculating the log of it to the base 10 base 10 means the problem is going to be simple if i want to calculate the log of this number your question should be what is the base because you should know the base because to that base i need to calculate the power right the question is simple that if i have a number 10 right what should be the power of this number so that it will become this number right and this number is going to be 1 2 3 4 5 6 you can write 10 to the power 6 10 to the power x is equal to 10 to the power 6 means x is equal to 6 and that is why i have written 6 here Similarly, for this, we have value 4, for 100, we have value 2, for 1, we have value 0, and so on. As simple as that. But now the question arises that, and I think you can calculate this also, that this is going to be 10 to the power minus 6, by the way, and that's why the number is minus 6. See the change here. If I want to understand that if we have a number 100, this number 100 
if it increases its value, it will become maybe 10 lakhs, means six zeros after one. But if we see the logarithm of this number, right, the value is increased only from two to six. And this is the power of logarithms. We can have a relation between very big numbers and very small numbers, you can say. I'm representing 100 with two, 10,000 with four, and maybe 10 lakhs with six, right? So we have relationship between the big numbers and the small numbers. If I can, I have to deal with this number, I can skip them and I can deal with these numbers, the smaller numbers. This is the whole soul power. So by the way, we are nowhere clear that where we are going to use them. But believe me, if you understand this mathematics, you will be amazed to see that when we are going to calculate the power of RF signals, these are going to be really, really interesting. Having said that, let's move to the next board. So enjoying learning. If you have reached till this point of the video, I think you are enjoying learning. And I just do not want to waste your time. I would like to say that if you want to see this complete course, this course is available on my website, which is www.pitchby.com. Please have a look at it. And along with this course, there are so many other courses available. If you want to start your networking journey from the beginning, from the scratch, or if you are a seasoned networking engineer, please have a look at this website. So you can see here is my website. The link of this website is also available on the description area just below this video. Thank you so much and enjoy learning. And here you are, here we are. Now we need to understand the power or the units of power and comparison. What is the meaning? The meaning is simple. We had the transmitter you all know and this transmitter is going to supply the electric current, AC signal, right? And this power will be going into this antenna and eventually this antenna will be generating radio waves or radio frequency. Now, suppose I have few laptops which are very near to this antenna under five meter. So I am very, very happy that all of my laptops are getting the signal from this antenna and all of my laptops are working fine. No issues with respect to that. But here is my problem. There are some laptops here also who wants to communicate with these laptops or maybe somewhere onto the internet using my antenna or using my access point. But they cannot do that because my coverage is five meter and these people are out of the way. And you can say, Mr. Vishnu, why can't they come very near to this antenna so that they can get the coverage? And here is the important point. When you design wireless network, coverage is going to be one of the most important piece, right? Can we increase this coverage? Absolutely, yes. But how? See, the radio waves you are generating using this antenna is dependent on how much you are supplying this signal, how much power of signal you are supplying. This is your RF signal, right? This is again the wave type structure. And we can measure this. Suppose right now you are giving a unit of 10. I am not sure what is the unit of current or power or whatever the signal you are providing. So I am just presuming it as a number 10. And this 10 number is producing a five meter coverage. Then you must be thinking that yes, when the signal travels, it absorbs by the free space as well as some buildings or maybe or maybe some, some, some object which is going to absorb it or maybe reflect it, reflect it. We have understood it. But this 10 unit of electric current is giving me the radio signal, which can go only five meters. If I want to increase the 10 meter, can I send a electric current of 20 units, right? And that is why I, I need to determine that if I want to go to 10 meter coverage, can I increase the power? Or can I indefinitely increase the power or infinitely increase the power? right? But to understand this, but to calculate all those things, right? You need to understand the unit of power, what exactly this power is. So every, uh, this energy, the invisible energy or the radio waves or radio frequency, which you say, right? They have power associated with them. But from where this power is coming, 
this power is coming from this transmitter this power is coming from the ac signal which you are providing providing greater the strength of the signal greater the strength of these radio waves in terms of energy you remember we discussed about the amplitude the amplitude was representing the power of the signal right if we give the more alternating current right the power or the amplitude of the frequency or the rf signal which is coming out from this antenna is going to be increased but can we control it absolutely if we increase it rf signal power is going to be increased now we need to understand how we can calculate this power right so there are two ways to calculate anything right you can give the absolute number or you can give the comparison if my last statement is not making any sense to you next board will make definitely sense to you but what is this right so now just just make a picture in your mind that that invisible energy the radio frequencies i am going to measure them because that energy has power with them right so let's see that we have mr a here just i have it, this analogy by the way right and mr a is six feet long because everybody everybody understand what is the meaning of one feet so everybody knows what is the meaning of six feet this is how you can define a value absolute value right if somebody say i just walk 50 meters and somebody says and and then uh, then that guy say i just walk 50 kilometers and then you must be thinking are you joking man there is too much of difference between 50 meter and 50 kilometer right for 50 meter maybe you can take maybe one minute for 50 kilometers you are going to see maybe you will be needing five or six or seven hours definitely if you walk continuously at a space right but the whole whole soul point is that if i say 50 meter or 50 kilometer you have that specific thing in your mind okay 50 kilometer i know because i know one kilometer these values are actually absolute values right if i say the power of this valve is 5 watt i understand this is 5 watt it is nothing to compare with right because this watt this meter this fit is the standard unit which almost everybody knows but there is another way of measuring right suppose i have mr b right and i say the height of mr by mr b is 2 by 3 of mr a then it is very very easy for you because you know the height of mr a which is 6 and now the height of mr a uh, height of mr b is 2 by 3 of mr a you are going to do 2 by 3 if you do the calculation it is going to be 4 4 fit this means that the blue color gentleman is 4 feet and the green color mr a is actually 6 feet you all know that so what exactly i am doing here i am doing comparison but it is a way to measure right right if i say mr b is 2 by 3 of mr a i am not absolutely defining that he is 4 feet long right i am just saying he by is just 2 by 3 of mr a but if you know mr a's height you can calculate it although it is a comparison but you de you can definitely calculate it right so that is how we are going to understand rf signal powers rf signal energy sometimes we are going to define them absolute on the absolute way sometimes we will be comparative so you need to understand whether a particular thing is comparative or whether a particular thing is absolute and this is the most critical thing right if you go on a uh, wi-fi survey you will see these terms like db right decibel or dbi believe me these are comparative values if you see it is a 40 uh, somewhere the number is written 40 or minus 40 it is not the exact value it is in comparison of something it is just like saying 2 by 3 of mr a if you do not know mr a you do not know what is the meaning of this minus 40 right 
and that is where a lot of uh, uh, network engineers network wireless engineers struggle when we somebody says minus 40 db no nothing but yes if i say a power of the signal is something or 40 units or 40 then it is absolute okay so whenever whatever the concept whenever the unit you are talking about you need to understand first whether it is a comparative unit two by three of mr a or absolute six feet because if you get that then you might be able to understand the meaning of that radio frequency signal power having said that we will be talking about these units like watt milliwatt dbm and db and dba db and dba is going to be comparative and this is going to be absolute but if you do not know them that is perfectly fine because we will be explaining them one by one right so no problems let's go to the next board and here you go now we have units of power in comparison watt and milliwatt what is the meaning so the left hand side of this picture has a tap right and the water is coming out of it and the right hand side of the picture is having a bulb maybe a battery in the wire believe me left hand side is analogy and right hand side is the actual concept let's talk about the analogy first you all know that the water is coming at a specific pace from here and water is going out at a specific pace from here which is known as the flow of water right water flow you can say but here is the knob and you can control the flow of water using the knob what exactly you are doing with respect to this knob you are controlling the pressure if pressure is more the water flow is going to be more if pressure is less the flow is less can we calculate with how much power this water is coming out from this tab yes definitely because if pressure is more flow is more so if multiply if you multiply pressure with the flow you will be getting the power at which this guy is coming out right and this is what you should understand whenever you see a mathematical formula like integration d by d it means differentiation and so many things which are so many scary symbol believe me these symbols are also created by people like us but the good thing with those people is they think more than us they ponder more than us what is the meaning the meaning is see whoever is defining who, uh, uh, the the power in terms of uh, electric current see the analogy is very very simple anybody can see that anybody can see that if pressure is more water is coming out but out of 100 how many will be writing this equation which is again simple right so whatever going on your mind whatever you are seeing physically if you can represent in the mathematics terms right this is what those scary looking formula are somebody has given this symbol also integration but if you understand what was in his mind when he was developing this thing believe me integration differentiation or whatever the scary looking those uh, uh, symbols right those are going to be very very easy so if we get the analogy let's talk about the right hand side because we are working on the units of power because we all know that this rf signal will be having some power right the greater the power the greater the distance it will travel and we are working on how to measure it right so if we have a battery of one volt right and if we connect two ends of the wire then definitely the electric current will flow into this wire if we connect a bulb it is going to start glowing there is no doubt about it right so basically the uh, but with what power it is coming right the meaning is if i say this one volt it is as good as my knob right because it is supplying the pressure as a result of this pressure 
my current is flowing if i have more pressure means more batteries more current will flow into this wire if more current will flow into this wire then basically we can get more illumination so somebody has defined the meaning of one watt means power that if one ampere of current flows in this wire in one uh, by pressure or by one volt battery because of this one volt battery one ampere of current flows then i can say and definitely there also we were multiplying pressure with the flow and here we are also multiplying pressure which is voltage to the ampere which is the current as simple as that right so here in terms of electricity the power is equal to current into voltage one watt means if one volt produces one ampere in the wire then we can say that one watt of power is flowing through this bulb and this bulb will be illuminating right if it is a 10 watt bulb then we are giving out only one watt power then definitely it will be glowing but very dim right but if we give 10 watt of power it is going to be glowing like anything right so power is equal to voltage into current but in case of rf signal believe me even this one watt of power is too much right for example if i say one kilometer is too much then we have meters means 1000 meter if we say then it is one kilometer similarly in case of watt in case of power if i divide this one watt with thousand equal parts in thousand equal part then one part is going to be my one milliwatt so one watt is equal to one thousand milli watt watt sorry and most of the signal which will be coming out from this antenna in case of your access points right because we are talking about w lands mostly they are will be in the range of one milliwatt 200 milliwatt believe me not more than me as simple as that right so whatever we just discussed watt or milliwatt it is absolute unit if i say 100 milliwatt it is an absolute value because we understand what right but now whatever we are going to study from next it is going to be comparison right let's talk about it now so we are done with the absolute thing but it's still we have the dbm we will be coming later but to understand dbm we need to understand decibel right and this is where most of the network wireless engineers like us is having problem because they do not understand the decibel but before decibel i would like to explain you the term bell so there was a great scientist name was graham bell and he has done some remarkable work in the in the field of telephony so what was happening at that point of time we have one uh, phone here with this person one phone here with this person and then basically these phones were connecting over the wire and when this human speak over this wire right then the signal strength will be less when it reaches to here and mr bell was studied about it was studying about it a lot right so with that there is a bell laboratory and they come into the conclusion that they want to calculate the signal once it it is here what is going to happen after 100 meter what is going to happen after one kilometer to this signal and so on right if that is the case they were talking about that the signal when it started was more and when it reaches to the end it was pretty less right so there was some research going on in the bell laboratory and that is what i would like to showcase you here so we have our favorite character anjali and rahul they are one football grounds apart consider this ground is absolutely empty and they want to talk to each other if they want to talk to each other this space is huge guys from here to here you all know right 
So I'm not sure what is the unit of sound, but I am denoting it a number that Anjali is shouting. So this number is maybe one lakh, five zeros after one, right? And after reaching to this distance, which I have showcased you here, this number is now 10,000, means one zero less. If you calculate the ratio of 10 to the power five with 10 to the power four, you are going to get 10. 10 to the power 1, sorry, 10 is to 1. It means that this signal or the strength of Anjali voice was reduced by a factor of 10 is to 1, right? Or you have divided this value by 10, right? After how, many, how much distance it happened, I do not know. But you all know that I, if I speak, if I shout loud, loudly, after a particular distance, it was the intensity of that shout is not just like it was when it was it, it came out from the Anjali or my mouth, right? Similarly, from 10,000 to 1,000, there is a loss of 10 is to 1. Means the signal or means this voice is 10 times, right? 10 times lesser. Here also, 10 times lesser. Here also, 10 times lesser. And here exactly it reaches here with Mr. Rahul ears, right? If that is the case, there is a reduction of four zeros, guys, right? And this 10 is to 1 is known as one bell. And by the way, the bell is the comparison between two signals. It is not the exact value. See, if I say that from here to here, or basically once we reach here, it is one bell, the meaning is whatever the signal I am receiving, whatever the signal I am receiving, it is 10 times less than whatever it was when, it, when the sender sent it. As <laughs> simple as that. Now, from here to here, if I tell you, again, the since, uh, signal lost one bell because it, when it came here. From here to here, again one bell because 10 is to 1 was lost. Again from here, here to here, 10 is to 1 was lost. So basically, one bell lost here. How many bell was loose? Loose from here to here. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Very, very interesting. So I would say the signal here is 4 bell. But can you make a meaning out of it? Right? What is the meaning of four bell? You can say when Anjali shouted, <laughs> right? And when the signal reaches to me, it was reduced by four bells, <laughs> right? Means four times the signal reduced by 10, right? If we divide the signal by 10 one time, then one bell. Again one time, then another bell. And that's why the signal was reduced by 10 four times very very interesting right so do not take this word absolute there is nothing absolute in this four bell you can think that if i am receiving four bell right the meaning is something maybe anjali was shouting with this number this unit right but when it reaches to me it was these four zeros were gone and then we have only three zeros as simple as that and now i can say i am having four bell this is the meaning of comparison guys many people do not know about it if you know now this is going to be great and now i will be introducing the logarithms also okay so by the way how we are going to calculate the uh, bell here my signal was uh, one lakh when it's when it was with Anjali, when it reaches to Rahul, it was 10, right? I am going to calculate the log of this because I do not want to deal with these long numbers. One zero will be canceled by this and this is how you are going to calculate the bell. Okay, it means that log 10 or by the way, this was this number were five, right? So here it is going to be 10 to the power 4 and this number is going to be 4 and that is what you are going to see here, the 4 bell. This is how you are going to calculate. You put the 
base signal or base sound and whatever the sound you are receiving you divide them calculate the log and then you are going to get the simple number four as simple as that guys right really really interesting but some people say no 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 bell is still whatever we are getting is not that number which is very much useful can we divide it with can we further divide it so somebody says yes we can call it decibel right so if we multiply bell with 10 whatever we are going to get is uh, decibel so one decibel is actually uh, one by tenth of the bell right sorry yeah so if i have say uh, four bell if i want to convert it to the decibel i need to multiply it with 10 it is going to give me 40 bells so one bell is equal to 10 decibel okay so now i can say that here basically rahul is receiving four bell or rahul is receiving 40 decibels d is a small b is the unit right so basically this is this is on the greatest great scientist uh, bell so i think you got this uh, number well right if you guys have any doubt any question please do ask and i am extremely sorry that today we are lost our 10 to 15 minutes in that uh, microsoft office sorry word anybody any doubt any question okay mr naveen has a doubt please naveen uh, please ask it out yeah yeah so for this um, see the decibel value like for example when uh, uh, i mean the left side anjali is uh, making a noise so like so this side bell is receiving some from uh, one lakh and it is becoming 10 right mm -hmm. So normally, so doesn't the sound propagate throughout the ground or it, it will come a straight line? Like for example, if you see in our... No, no, I, 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 yeah, I get your point. Actually, the sound is flowing like this only. But I, if I no. show everything here, right, then it was not mm -hmm. that clear. So mm -hmm. I was, uh, I was drawing uh, things like this. Sorry for this confusion. Okay. But okay. it is going okay. in the straight direction. Okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, but I want to showcase this way so that I I can have the good amount of space to write here. Otherwise, if I write here on the green uh, color things, it is going to create more confusion. Okay, this is the idea. But a good question. Yeah. Anybody else? I think people are liking the mathematics or not liking at all. But believe me, guys, if you get the these concepts well, right, which are very, very easy, but which are very, very, see, if you just take a book of CWNA, right? I am not against that book because I am also reading from it and some of the other books. But believe me, things are not, not making much sense in, in some of the books, right? So if you have these kind of concepts, those books are going to be very easy for you to read. This is absolutely foundations, right? So we just read about the unit of power means watt milliwatt and we just compare two signals right when it was at anjali or when it was at rahul then basically decibels come into picture and decibel doesn't mean anything unless you think them that this is the ratio right of whatever is at anjali's place and whatever i got it here right and I, if i have taken the logarithm why logarithm because I want do not want to work on these big numbers. If I see this is a four bell, the meaning is while the signal was traveling from Anjali to Rahul, it went four times, right? It went down four times in the ratio of 10. So when it reaches here, one, uh, one by 10th of is gone. When it reaches here, one by 10th is gone, means two bell. One by 10th is gone, means three bell. And here one by 10th is gone, means four bell. Decibel means you need to multiply bell bell by 10. That is a decibel. Okay. Now let's talk about an interesting thing. So by the way, in the last class, I think Naveen, you also had a question. 
uh, that we couldn't get much about EIRP or the intentional radiator, whatever you are saying. Today, it is going to be very, very simple, believe me, once we have these mathematics with us. So now, let's see this decibel uh, with respect to our uh, access points, right? So access point is going to be anything which is able to understand that invisible energy, right? And then basically on the one side, it is going to understand this invisible energy. On the other side, it can understand the wire, right? So what I am doing here is I am putting Cisco's access point here, right? Although it is looking like the wireless router, which we have at home, but maybe it can be same. So we have this in one room. And now the energy which is coming out from it is 100 milliwatt. Now you have the little bit of idea about 100 milliwatt right and i am showcasing that energy not with this wave like structure because we have studied it but i am showcasing it with the circles right because it is moving everywhere from this access point and of course we have anjali sitting at a specific distance from here to here but the problem is anjali is receiving only 10 milliwatt of energy Although she can communicate, but the access point was sending 100 milliwatt, Anjali is receiving only 10 milliwatt, and poor Rahul is actually receiving even less. It is only 1 milliwatt. Now the question arises that can we do something to calculate all this thing in terms of decibels or bells? It is going to be very, very simple. Now we are talking about the comparison, right? Original signal was 100 milliwatt. The signal which I received is 10 milliwatt. How I'm going to calculate the bell? It is very, very simple. To calculate the bell, the formula was log of 10, means 10 base. Whatever the power you have initially, which is I had 100 milliwatt, and whatever the power I have right now at the Anjali's place, which is at 10, right? This is the comparison what power I am getting. So basically, the this equation will be log of 10. And then basically, if you divide it, it is going to be 10, or we can say 10 to the power 1, right? Then if you calculate this, it, is, it will be actually only 1. So what we have just calculated, this is the formula to calculate the bell. What is the formula to the calculate decibel? You need to multiply bell with 10 it is going to be 1 into 10, it means that 10. So basically, if I write the decibel value here, it is going to be 10 dB, as simple as that. Really, really interesting, right? Now, let's, or, and what is the meaning of this 10 dB? You should understand this. This 10 dB doesn't mean anything until and unless you know from where or what value you are comparing but you all know for the fact that when this signal was at its peak when it was sent by this ap right it was 10 times more than me this is the meaning of the decibel right as simple as that now or so, sorry the bell now let's talk about mr uh, mr rahul right here what is happening guys is that we had the power 100, sorry, the initial power. Now we have only one. If that is the case, we have <clears throat> uh, 100 upon 1, right? It means that we have 10 to the power 2. And if we take the log of it, it is going to give me 2. It means that it is going to be 2 decibels. And then if I multiply it with by 10, sorry, bells, if I multiply it with 10, 2 into 10 is equal to 20 decibel at right here with Mr. Rahul, right? 10 dB here, 20 dB here. But does it mean, does it making any sense? If a normal guy who doesn't understand, he will be saying 10 dB here, and he is saying 20 dB here, what is the meaning? See, the meaning is not that the Rahul is getting more power, Rahul is getting less power, guys right because if i say 10 db the meaning is the original power was reduced by a factor of 10 right and here if i am saying 20 db the meaning is first when it came in the middle then basically 
10 db was lost then again 10 db was lost what is the meaning of 10 db lost that the that you have 1 by 10th of the power and then now you have 1 by 10th of the power and everything is gone and that is why you are here receiving only one milliwatt which is 20 decibel and that is where most of the problems comes with the people right 20 db 10 db try to understand 20 db is lesser as compared to 10 db i'm talking about dbs right but when i talk about dbm or dbi it is a completely different concept so just concentrate on this right so whatever the power value i have here in terms of db i have 20 db less here i have 10 db less here interesting right very very interesting now let's talk about the next concept and here i am introducing the concept of dbi and this is where most of the guys were having problem in my last class. Just give me 10 minutes guys on this board so that you will be understanding this fully, okay? 10 more minutes of concentration. By the way, after that we have few boards, but those are not, uh, those are not as much intensive as that, this, right? So what is happening here? I have a transmitter, right? And I am giving some power or alternately current to this antenna. And this antenna is isotropic antenna. And you must be thinking, Mr. Vishnu, what is isotropic? If I remind you that I have given an example of Mr. Sun, who radiates equal amount of energy at equal distances from him, right? And by the way, I also mentioned that Sun is the biggest example of isotropic things right if we talk about our antenna we haven't nobody has ever developed an antenna which is isotropic means that if you calculate the power here if you calculate the power at the same distance here is this power is going to be same no but if we do not have that we can think about it an ideal line antenna just like the sun which is radiating energy in all the directions right if that is the case then basically this energy will be radiated in all the direction equal energy at equal distance as simple as that right now let's talk about another antenna which is our normal antenna right and now suppose I am giving this guy, this transmitter at energy of maybe say uh, 50 milliwatt. This antenna is spreading this signal everywhere and this energy is going to be this much. Total 50 milliwatt, right? But now suppose I am on my normal antenna because Isotropic antenna is something which is ideal, right? But in our case, generally in the wireless engineer, do not want that everywhere my signal goes. So what we are going to do, we will be creating another antenna, right? Which is directional, which we will be talking about it, which we are right. So in this transmitter also, we are giving this 50 meter, so sorry, 50 milliwatt of energy to this antenna. But here is the thing, here is the important thing, guys. The important thing is that this antenna is radiating energy into a particular direction, not everywhere. Nope, not everywhere, guys. It is just like to say that if you have hang a bulb in a room, it is radiating energy everywhere, right? But if we see this directional antenna, it is just like a torch or the flashlight. And that is where the same bulb is going to be very bright into this thing, right? Really, really interesting. Now, if you calculate the energy here, means after 5 meter from my antenna, and if you calculate the energy here, 5 meter from this antenna, in all the direction, of course, 
this energy is going to be greater as compared to isotropic antenna but you must be thinking mr vishnu isotropic antenna is not there but that is that is my point in case of dbi what exactly uh, sorry dbi what exactly we are doing we are comparing my antenna or the antenna which we make to something which is ideal whose energy is more into a particular direction of course my uh, my antenna's energy right it means that it is always be the case that my directional antenna's energy is going to be more or the power is going to be more as compared to isotropic right and if it is more then it is the gain gain with respect to what gain respect with respect to isotropic antenna so suppose the energy was here e1 and energy here is e2 after 5 meter definitely this e2 is more right because we are focusing it one watt bulb can become can look like 5 watt bulb but the overall energy is going to be same we are still supplying 50 milliwatt but we are concentrating it that is why this e2 is way more as compared to this guy and by the way this is also known as the gain which we were talking about right and if i give you an example then generally our antenna whatever we see they came with the gain setting they are going to say we have 2.14 gain but 2.14 db of uh, or dbi but what is the meaning of 2.14 dbi again this value is actually comparison comparison with what comparison with isotropic antenna what is isotropic antenna which doesn't exist but if it was there whatever the energy he was radiating my antenna is radiating 2.14 more as compared to this guy right so basically i want to say my 50 milliwatt will be producing the same thing as maybe 100 or 200 milliwatt by, by, by this guy i will be calculating the exact values if this thing is making little bit sense to you this is going to be great right so we still now we have understood only few things what milliwatt then decibels and then dbi interesting right so what was absolute milliwatt was also absolute db was the comparison dbi was the comparison why how dbi is the comparison because you are comparing the antenna's antenna gain with the isotropic antenna as simple as that guys if you feel any doubt any problem you can raise your hand right otherwise there is no benefit of having the live class now the last term which is very very important and you are going to see this everywhere wherever you go if you are going for a site survey also this is the thing which you want right now i am again coming back to a concept and the concept name is uh, sorry for this the concept name is d b m what is the meaning of dbm now comparison is enough people say i we want absolute thing in terms of decibels can you give it to me and then there is a uh, there is a concept which is dbm come into picture or unit dbm come into picture so basically the unit dbm means that we are calculating dbs or decibels right from power from actual milliwatt so there is a scale if i say 1 milliwatt 1 milliwatt is equal to 0 dbm right 10 milliwatt is equal to 10 dbm 100 milliwatt is equal to 20 dbm and then 0 0.1 is equal to 10 dbm and then mr vishnu uh, then you must be thinking mr vishnu how you have created this what is the logic of transferring or what is the logic between this milliwatt and dbm can you explain <laughs> the logic is very very simple guys right the logic is that if you want to calculate dbm which is decibel related to 
milliwatt okay is equal to 10 multiply by 10 multiply by log of now you understand the log log of power this is not the relative value i am not saying initial power and then the power which i get no i am talking about wherever you want to calculate the dbm just calculate the power take the log of it and you are going to get the dbm as simple as that for example suppose i have 1 milliwatt of power i want to prove it to you that how it is going to be 0 dbm 10 multiply log of power i am talking about 1 milliwatt of power 1 milliwatt means well, i need to put 1 here right how i can write 1 1 can be 10 to the power 0 as simple as that right if that is the case it is going to give me 10 into log of 10 10 to the power 0 it is going to give me 10 into 0 right and if that is the case it will it will be 0 and that is where the dbm value is 0 and now you can calculate at any point but what is the meaning of it right again i have an example that 100 milliwatt is equal to 20 dbm why the calculation is going to be simple 10 multiply by log of 100 right and log of 100 is equal to 10 uh, uh, and log of 100 is equal to 2 because 10 to the power 2 is equal to 100 it means that 20 dbm so at the excess point now i can easily calculate how much it is with respect to my milliwatt right it is 20 dbm as simple as that now as i reach to anjali anjali is getting only 10 milliwatt right if i calculate it it is going to give me 10 dbm if i calculate uh, the power received at the rahul end which is 1 mil uh, milliwatt then it is going to give me 0 dbm right even this can go into the negatives right because somewhere maybe if i am sitting with a laptop here which is at the greatest distance it could be possible that i am receiving only 0 0.1 here if this is the 0 0.1 and if i calculate it it is going to give me minus 10 db very very interesting guys here basically if i am going away my dbm value is getting negative in terms of db it was increasing because that was comparison of two signal and compare it right previously here i am i was getting 20 dbm sorry 20 dbs right in previous board and here it is 20 db suppose and if i minus it then again it is going to give me 0 db because that was the comparison means i had the signal i lost the complete signal right i have zero zero means one milliwatt really really interesting right so see this video again and again again and again until and unless you get the concept of dbi dbm and this thing right believe me these are very very simple but now the question lies you must be thinking mr vishnu you are talking about logarithms and logarithms why can't we calculate just like that right because dbm is an important parameter which you do in most of your site surveys when you go and calculate that if i put an access point here how much value it is going to give me right in terms of dbm if i calculate the dbm means i can calculate the power of the signal right if the power of the signal is weak and my receiver is not able to identify it it means that's a problem right so if you get this way this thing it is going to be really really interesting right <laughs> and you can be very confident in your site surveys if you are guiding or if you are doing it okay now what i would like to do is i would like to showcase the same mathematics without any logs right because you don't have all the times logarithms right because right now i am doing uh, i am showcasing you very very simple logs means if i have this log 10 and then i am showcasing you only 10 to the power maybe 7 8 9 6 and you are easily calculating it right but what is going to happen if my power value is 896 right then it is the case then basically you need to have those log books but i do not want to calculate the exact values most of the times right if it is somewhat nearer to the exact value i am okay with that 
and that is why i am going to tell you now some rules and you can see the values of the power and then you can determine what should be the dbm value for it right it is very very simple so there is a rule which is known as 3 db rule i think you have heard about it very very simple now i am simplifying your your work so right now we have access point whose power is 100 milliwatt it is sending the signal of 100 milliwatt and here if i calculate the dbm decibel with respect to multi uh, 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 with respect to milliwatt it is going to be 20 as simple as that when we reach to anjali right at Anjali, if I calculated it, it is 17 dBm. So the rule says that if you lose 3 dBm, your power will be exactly half. Very, very interesting. It means that if I say at Anjali, if somebody says that you have 17 dBm, when you started, you were 20 dBm, you can easily calculate that if there is a loss of 3 dBm, the meaning is the power is exactly half. So you can without any doubt you can say the power here will be 50 million watt sorry 50 milliwatt not million let's talk about let's calculate how this power will be when it will be reaching to mr rahul rahul says somebody says at rahul it is exactly 14 dbm so now i can calculate see at my access point it was 20 right when I reach is halfway, somewhere here it was lost 3 dBm, and after halfway it lost 3 dBm, right? Interesting. It means that my power will be half here. Here exactly it is 50 uh, uh, milliwatt, and after that here it will be 25 milliwatt. As simple as that. There is a rule of 10 also which is again very, very simple. So rule of 10 says that if you lose 10 dBm, then you are going to lose 10 times of your power. For example, if we have 1000 milliwatt here with 30 dBm, you can calculate it is going to give you 30 dBm if you, if you calculate the log. And at the Anjali, if the power is only 20, if the, if the uh, signal strength is only 20 dBm, this means that my signal strength will be exactly 1 by 100. Sorry, uh, it, it, it is gone 10 times. So if it is 1000 milliwatt here, it will remain only 100 milliwatt here. As simple as that. If you talk about Mr. Rahul, just have a look at it, Mr. Rahul, right? Mr. Rahul has only 10 dBm. It means that it has they, uh, he has lost 10 dBm twice. Previously, it was 30, then 20, then 10. It means that 1000 will become uh, 100 million watt, milliwatt here, and then it become 10 milliwatt exactly here, as simple as that. So following these rules, you can calculate that after means if you lose 30 if you lose some 10 dBs or 3 dB then uh, how much power you have lost as simple as that right so now we would like to explain means i would like to explain you the last board and then we will call it a day just 5 more minutes because here many people has many problems right so we have an isotropic antenna here on the left hand side right here right and to isotropic antenna i am giving 1000 milliwatt of power when this 1000 milliwatt going uh, power was going through this wire it lost 3 dbm it lost exactly it is minus 3 dbm it means it lost 3 dbm and I explained you that if we lost 3 dBm, then my power will be exactly half. So when I give this power to this antenna, this is going to be 500 milliwatt, as simple as that. And because this is an isotropic antenna, it will be radiating equal energy in everywhere, so that it will be radiating 500 milliwatt signal energy, as simple as that. Now let's see the magic right here what this normal antenna will do the directional antenna because we cannot create any ideal antenna like this isotropic antenna what i'm giving you i am giving right here 100 milliwatt 
of power and in this wire i lost 3 dBm because when power goes to a wire because of the heat and so many other things resistance power get lost and i am presuming that my 3 dBm is lost because the length of the wire in the case of isotropic and the normal antenna was same so basically i lost 3 dBm here also it means that i am only giving 50 milliwatt of power means ac signal here and now i am saying this antenna gain is 10 dbi what is the meaning of 10 dbi so basically not meter this is dbi milliwatt not it is dbi the meaning is it is 10 time better than the isotropic antenna if you calculate the power here and if you calculate the power here this is 10 times better right oh sorry this is 10 dbi better than this and now my question arises that if you are sending a 55 50 milliwatt of power right and this is boosted by 10 dbi right i told you the rule that uh, <clears throat> if you if you lose 10 if you lose 10 db your power will be lost by 1 by 10 you all know that right if if i say that if you gain 10 db then your power will be increased by the factor of 10 you all know that right so that rule works in both the ways if 3 db loss means that your power is half 3 db gains means your power is doubled right and that is why if i say power is lost here 3 db that is why the value become half and if i am saying here 10 db more it means that your value will be multiplied by 10 the power value and that is where here this antenna will be radiating 50 into 10, which is going to be 500 milliwatts. See the difference. The isotropic antenna will be radiating the same signal when it is given 1000 milliwatt of energy or the power. And here this antenna, the directional antenna is doing the same thing with 100 milliwatt. But the thing is that isotropic antenna doesn't exist, but we need, we are comparing it with some something. So we are comparing our directional antennas with isotropic antennas see the difference i think it may be too much on your brain today right but believe me if you have some free time because you are going to have friday saturday sunday right just have a look at it just sit with the pen and paper right because maybe in beginning it is looking little bit uh, little bit uh, kind of not making sense to you but believe me these concepts are very very simple i will be using them because now fr from now on these dbi dbm i will be using them in my terms right then you need to think what is the meaning of dbm what this guy is talking about what is the meaning of dbi is this guy is talking about uh, the gain of an antenna with respect to isotropic the meaning of dbm is uh, maybe this guy is now talking about absolute power because dbm is the absolute power because if we have power we can calculate the dbm if i if i am talking about db only the decibels only then this guy is talking about the comparison right just go through this concept guys if i revise today's lecture in maybe two minutes what we have just studied we want to measure the RF signal. If you want to measure the RF signal, we used to have some units, right? We do not want to deal with the large numbers. That is why we are dealing with the logarithms because they convert the large number into a corresponding smallest number, right? And then we came with the what? If one ampere of current flows, right? And by one volt, then we are getting the one watt, then milliwatt. Then we are talking when then we talked about the decibel, which came from the bell. One by tenth of the signal is the bell. And then we talked about DBI. How much my antenna gains as respect to the, uh, with respect to the isotropic? Then we talked about DBM. Then we talk about just two rules. If my DBM goes by three, my energy, my power will go by half. If my dBm goes by 10, my energy will go by the factor of 10. It is in the vice versa also. Means if I, the dBm goes by up by 10, my energy will be increasing by the factor of 10. If my dBm goes by 3, sorry, goes up by 3, 
my energy will be or the power will be twice as simple as that having said that i would like to take a pause here to take your questions anybody any doubt any question please do ask okay at least tell me whether you can hear my voice guys yes perfect so we have a question from mr gomati gomati ji please ask your question yeah so so the the loss which we are talking about the transmitter between the transmitter and the antenna right so minus 3 dvm yeah right so the transmitter we can we can we assume that it is access point and the antenna which is attached into the access point you can say that right? so basically if you see today's access point also means most of them is having antenna in them only right exactly inside the, antenna so basically yeah. antenna is right here and then uh, this access point has a circuit the complete circuit which is having transmitter and yeah. this transmitter is supplying the uh, uh, the the current uh, to this guy and because of we have so much of circuitry in the wires involved there might be the case that we lose the some of the power here but access point is too small right but sometimes we see that power is coming from somewhere else over this wire and then it is going to the transmitter and then it is receiving to the antenna right then ex uh, that, that's extended yes. antenna so th yeah this is what my question here at so if it is inside the antenna uh, then there is no, nothing lost there is no not that much loss means it, it is quite less not like 3 dbm right 3 dbm means power is exactly half comptj right yeah 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 so any so uh -huh, the, go the, the isotropic antenna is actually a, it's a, it's a reference point you are right, right? you get it correctly yes see okay. because we need to uh, I, we are saying that my flashlight is better my flashlight is better but better with respect to what if i see the bulb in the room right if i take out the bulb from the flashlight right and if i see that in the room then it is different but if i see in the flashlight it is different it is it, it the energy is more intensified right exactly the same thing if i want to measure that it is way better as compared to isotropic i need to calculate how much better right mr gomti it yeah. is the reference yeah. point and yeah. that is by dvi yeah. got it yeah got it but thing is actually which you are talking about only on the directional antenna right see if you if you are talking about the omni directional antenna so the same like isotropic antenna it will work right so the go i mean uh, gomti ji the problem is nobody ever was able to produced an isotropic antenna like this okay right so even the omni directional antenna even the omni directional antenna also radiates energy but not equal energy at equal distance this is the definition of and that is why they oh, have okay. the they, that is why they have at least little gain with respect to isotropic so any antenna you take those are going to be having little gain with respect to this isotropic one okay mr gomti got it yeah got it yeah. yeah thank you anybody else so it seems that you guys are okay if you guys are okay i am okay just a request just have a look at this uh, this class again and again maybe two or three times if you get that believe me you are going to be really really good with respect to wireless networking mr navin has a question has a question mr navin please do ask yeah so normally in our enterprise network so when we deploy the access point so as you just shown in the previous slides like uh, anjali and rahul uh, mm -hmm. and they are when, when central access point is placed so one is getting the good signal and one is getting the low dvm right so what would be the standard and ideal to get the proper signal because what i've seen in enterprise is sometimes if, if the access point is too far so automatically laptop will switch over from 5 gigahertz to 2.4 gigahertz mm -hmm. and all happens mm -hmm. so what would be the ideal value wherein you have to get the proper uh, signal yeah so like right now uh, uh, navin it's a great question i do not have answer right away with me but in the future classes i will be definitely talking about them okay oh okay okay perfect mr abu baker sani please do ask your question mr abu yes sir um so my 
question is in reference to those two values and the three, the three decibel and then the 10, are they the only two constant values that I mean you'll be using in wireless network? No, this is this is just for the explanation sake, Mr. Abu. Whatever I have okay. chosen, the 10 dB, which is the antenna gain. By the way, if you yeah. see any antenna or any access point, they are going to tell you that what is the antenna gain, right? If you take any antenna, uh, it is written right there that this is the gain of the antenna. So uh, whatever the signal okay. you are giving uh, them, and if you, uh, if you just calculate uh, with these rules, whatever the 10 dB or 3 dB rules which we have, right? Uh, you will be yeah. able to get what exact uh, power of signal I will be radiating from the antenna. Because the okay. energy which I am providing from here, it is under my control. I can control it uh, using the WLC also, that how much power I would give so that my signal will be of this strength. Uh, and the okay. strength of the signal is this much, then I can calculate the distance also uh, till uh, what point okay. it will go. Okay. Right? Oh, okay, so I uh, mean, so you mean whatever any antenna uh, access point that I mean you get, there's going to be like a uh, like a re ratio calculation behind it, right? For instance, like uh, minus three dB is going to be half, maybe half of the power. Right. Okay. You are absolutely right. So overall, see, still we are not absolutely clear about how antenna patterns work right and that is what we are going to discuss yes. uh, the next class is going to be maybe on the antenna patterns also right so if we have that kind of knowledge then we can combine uh, the antenna patterns and our knowledge of calculation of this radio of frequency signals then it's going to increase our knowledge to i think that to the next level so i would say the sixth class the, the the next two classes are going to be on the modulation and this thing and once it is done then we can talk about our lab that what we are going to do uh, but these six points these six classes are going to be your foundations your basics if you get them clearly uh, it is going to give you a hell lot of clear, uh, clarity when you go and deploy any wireless network having said that Thank you so much for being a wonderful audience. See you in the next class. Bye for now.